Frank Drone was my uh, grand uncle, my grandfather's brother. Frank Drone. He was the eldest son of a family of uh, seven brothers and one sister. Um, the sister died of meningitis when she was 12. Uh, his mother would have been uh, Mary Grady. And uh, they moved, they, he was born in Carrick and Shore. But uh, her family, the Grady's, they moved from Carrick and Shore to Newcastle, which is a Gwaeltog area of Cyclone Mill, during the famine. Of all the times, in the 1850s, they moved. And uh, his mother Mary then was born out in the Gwaeltacht. But they were back in Carrick again in 1860. They, mo they must have moved out of Carrick because things were so bad during the, during the famine. And I think his love for the Irish was, came from her because she spent the first about eight years or so in a Gwaeltacht. So she had Irish and English words, if you like. And he set out to learn the language. He went out every time he could out. He cycled out. It was all cycling. Like, you know, he was a very fit man. It was all cycling. He cycled out there and he learned the language. And he set up the Gaelic League here in town. He was totally nationalist. The follow-on from that, of course, was that through the Gaelic League, he ended up in the IRB. And through the IRB, then he ended up founding the volunteers here in Clanmel and was the uh, officer in command in 1916 when the rising happened. So that would have been the local uh, connection here. He ended up being arrested in 1916, a few days after uh, the surrender in Dublin, and uh, was uh, sent to England, into Dublin, Frankock, where he met all the other, uh, Terence McSweeney, everybody else. So. Um, uh, so he got to know the leaders, if you like, um, without the bushes knowing it, if you like. They said over the university, as they call it. It allowed Collins to suss out his men all over the country. He knew who he could rely on, because he had met them in Francock. I knew what they were capable of, what their background was, were they good organisers, could they keep their mouth shut. He was definitely... Uh, he was in the right place when he landed there. The university is right. The university is right, yeah. And he came back in here and he took over? He came back then and he took over again, but then the British came up with this uh, German plot and arrested them all again, exported them uh, this time and he ended up in Osk, where he uh, damaged his knee playing rounders out in the, their hours, uh, source time in the, in the yard or whatever. Um, wasn't looked after medically. I suppose the British had enough. The older medical people were in France and dealing with what was being sent home. So uh, by the time uh, they got around to sending a, a, a medic trainee, I think, out to see him, he said, uh, Jesus, take that off of your knee or you'll end up with no leg. Whatever bandage or thing that they had on it, they had it done it wrong. So uh, he was a damaged man when he came home. The, uh, the um, flu, the great flu, almost killed him, as it did kill his friend Pierce McCann. Uh, Pierce would have been uh, the commander of the tip side, uh, and he was also a TD in the first doll. So uh, Frank was grafted into the second doll uh, on Pierce's date.